everybody, welcome back. This is part two of the uh, Tamiya 148 scale F35 Lightning 2 build. Uh, last time in part one, I made a start on the build by putting the cockpit together and getting that installed into the upper fuselage. I also uh, assembled and painted the engine intakes and the engine face. So those parts are waiting in the wings ready for the next step of the build. This time in part two, I'm going to be concentrating on the internal weapons bay, which is quite a complex part of the uh, Tamiya kit. I'll also be putting together the exhaust nozzle and that and the weapons bay will be fitted into the lower fuselage and hopefully this episode uh, will get the fuselage assembled. So I've had a little bit of a move round in the shed this week. I've moved the Bismarck over onto the main bench uh, over to your left, just off screen there. And I'll be working on the BF109, the Zukimura kit, and this F35 over in this corner of the bench, tucked away here. So let's get on with things. We'll uh, get the parts ready for this uh, weapons bay, and we'll make a start this week. In the last uh, episode, the first episode of the series, we got as far as uh, section 6 in the Tamir instructions. So I'm going to carry on uh, this episode and try to finish the weapons bay and the main undercarriage bays. So that should take us to round about section 14 uh, in the instructions here. So uh, the main job is to get all the parts that we need for the uh, weapons bay, which uh, starts here in section 12. And there's an awful lot of details you'll see when we uh, take the parts off the sprue. So uh, we'll get the parts cut off and cleaned up for section 12, 13 and 14. Uh, most of them are going to be uh, painted white. There's a bit of detail painting to do as well and a few decals. Uh, but generally it's a case of uh, careful clean up and uh, painting then assemble it all. So let's make a start, we'll get the parts sorted out. All the sprue shots that you see of this kit uh, show this part, it's absolutely astonishing the uh, level of detail on it. And with all the other parts that we're going to fit in this episode, it should make a really uh, detailed assembly. Sorry for my... Uh, Sorry again for the state of my uh, voice this week, but I uh, started with a cold just after New Year and uh, it's not left me yet. So I just need to spend a bit of time cleaning all these parts up. I'll see what we can uh, attach to these main assemblies before painting. And uh, then we'll get the parts primed up. So I'll do a check fit of all the parts just to make sure they fit properly. I'm sure they will do.
Okay, I think the only parts that I want to fit at this stage before painting are these two pieces here, C11. Okay, so uh, that goes together okay, as you'd expect. Uh, so these could all be sorted out, ready for priming. The other part of this uh, assembly sequence includes the uh, undercarriage bays, which are these. And I might as well get all these primed together. I'm just checking the fit of that just to make sure or just to see how much of this assembly I'm going to have to paint in the white. It really is just these two wheel bays here and obviously the armament bay. Okay, this is uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500 and I'm using black. I'll give the ho whole of this assembly a coat of uh, black primer. This primer's thinned about 50% with Mr. Hobby leveling thinners. Now I've got some uh, Mr. Base White. This, as I found out last time when I was doing the nose gear bay, uh, dries to a really nice satin white finish. And I want to build this up in uh, even layers because I don't want to hide all the black. Uh, because I want the black to act as a little bit of shading underneath the parts.
So I've got a nice uh, 3D effect with the black pre-shading on that, or the black primer overcoated with uh, the Mr. Hobby white base coat. So uh, that's brought all that nice Tamiya detail out. And now I'm just doing a bit of detail painting. This is all called out in the Tamiya instructions. So you can see here, this is uh, this part here. And what I like to do, because there are so many different colours and locations, I just cross off when I've uh, done each section. And it just helps you keep track of where you are with, uh, with all this detail painting. So at the minute I'm using some Tamiya lacquer flat black to pick out some of the boxes and some of the rubber uh, cables and pipes and so on. So I'll just work around and use a really fine brush. This is one of my uh, Sable double O brushes. And uh, I like to use Sable brushes on work like this because uh, particularly on when you're trying to paint these pipes you want the paintbrush to hold uh, plenty of paint so that you can generally do the uh, painting in one stroke. You don't want to be working the paint a lot, particularly with a matte colour because it tends to just rough up uh, and spoil the uh, finish. So with the sable brushes holding so much paint and delivering it to the tip of the brush uh, these are the best bet rather than trying to use a cheap brush on work like this. So this is Tamiya Lacquer LP3. And uh, the difficult thing is actually working out where you are on the drawing. The other thing with uh, doing this sort of detail work is to make sure that the paint is thinned uh, just to the correct consistency. If it's too thin it will tend to act like a wash and just spread out into the detail which I don't actually want in this case. And if it's too thick it just doesn't go on properly and it clumps up so you need to just experiment really it's difficult to describe exactly uh, the correct consistency that you're after. Uh, it's just a case of practice I suppose.
Next, uh, I've got some German grey. Tell me a call out XF63, but this is the lacquer equivalent LP27. Okay, on to the main undercarriage bays now. And like the armament bay, we've just got to pick out some pipes and cables and so on. So the first call out is for silver. And for this, I'll be using some Tamiya lacquer gloss aluminium. This is Tamiya Lacquer Flat Black. Just to carry on with uh, some of these detail parts, we've got some decals to fit on these three. And if you've seen part one of the series where I fitted some of the Tamiya decals onto the cockpit consoles, you'll know that uh, they're not the easiest uh, decal to use. I found them really poor grip and I use some of this uh, Tamiya Decal adhesive to get them to uh, grab onto the part fairly quickly. Uh, 
the uh, decal that needs to go over this part it's got a very heavily raised piece of detail on it and although Tommy do cut out the decal or the backing film for it I don't think it looks big enough to go over that and knowing how difficult these are uh, it wouldn't conform uh, over that raised detail so I'm going to cut that section out just to make absolutely sure that it's going to slip over that. It's uh, sad really that Tomia make such fantastic fitting kits and very well detailed kits and just let themselves down with the decals when you think that uh, a company like Airfix who in my experience have the reverse problem, the fit of the kits isn't as good, provide uh, really fantastic decals from Cartograph. It's uh, one part of Tamiya's approach that uh, really could do with some work. I'll just let those settle for a while and then I'll give them a shot with some Microsol. Okay, so uh, finally got the decals to settle down on these parts. But really they do take an awful lot of work with uh, softeners and really you just got to have the patience to uh, let them grip, they take an awful lot of uh, time to grip onto the part. So uh, the one concern I've got really going forward in the build is that Tamiya provide a lot of the uh, decals for the uh, main airframe, all the borders to the panels. And I think that'll be a real struggle to fit so many decals to the, to the airframe uh, and get a good result really so I'm going to have to think long and hard about how to tackle that. We can now start to assemble all these parts that have all been pre-painted. We'll get them fitted and uh, finish off this uh, weapons bay.
So that's ready to fit into the lower fuselage now. So it's a, quite a complex uh, assembly. There's a lot of detail in that. And I'm just wondering how much of that will be covered up by the uh, weapons when we fit them. But uh, for the time being, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to uh, one side uh, and build the other component of this underside fuselage, uh, which is the jet pipe. So uh, that's next up. So not much to this uh, jet pipe, just the two halves and the fan at the back. So uh, I'll get those painted up, assembled and we can fit it to the lower part of the fuselage. Before I uh, use this under fuselage part, I just need to drill out the correct uh, holes in the wings for the pylons. I'm going to be fitting all the armament in what's known as uh, beast mode on the F-35. So a couple of pylons on the wings and all the armament in the uh, internal armament bay here. So uh, Tamiya lay out very clearly which holes need to be opened up so we'll do those now. Time to do some assembly now and I'll start off with the exhaust nozzle. Uh, with this I've just painted around the outlet for the nozzle here on the fuselage because it's uh, not going to be possible to get in and paint that. I'm not sure it's going to be visible really but just as a precaution I've already filled in the fuselage colour which is a Tamiya mix. I'll talk a little bit about that when uh, we come to do the main painting. Uh, but uh, that's just filled in so we should be able to fit this nozzle now without leaving any bare plastic anywhere. Now the weapons bay can go in.
This is a burner clamp and it's useful when uh, you need to reach across like this to clamp an assembly down. So I don't often use it, but it's just now and again, there's an application like this where you just need that extra reach. So that needs to set for an hour or so before I put the uh, this assembly in which holds the uh, undercarriage bay roof. So I'll come back when I'm happy that this is glued in enough and uh, we'll do that next step. This part, uh, which as you've seen before, contains the roof of the main gear bay. It's a really substantial piece of plastic really. Um, it's a wonder why Tamiya didn't just provide the section here, the roof section. But uh, they haven't. There's this enormous piece which fits like that over the uh, weapons bay. I suppose it clamps the weapons bay down a little bit. Again, I'll leave that to dry and uh, we'll come back and just do a quick test fit of the upper fuselage and the intakes. Uh, I'm sure everything will go together all right, but uh, I'll just show you what the airframe looks like, more or less complete. Okay, so the um, weapons bay and the undercarriage bay assembly is set. I've left that overnight in the clamps just to make sure that it's all nice and solid, which it is. And I think that's what this section here is doing to this structure. It's really uh, securing the whole assembly in the right place. As I said, it's very substantial. So now it's time to get the fuselage put together. So what I'll be doing is bringing together the part that I've been working on in this episode together with the uh, intake assembly and the nose uh, assembly that I prepared last time in part one and also the upper fuselage with the cockpit already installed. So all that was done in the first part of the series. So let's get these three together and then hopefully we should have uh, a fairly complete airframe apart from the tail surfaces at that point. So the first step is to glue the intake and lower fuselage onto the upper. So we've got some really solid uh, location pins here that go into these very sturdy pegs. Uh, and we have to align the intakes into the right position here at the front. I've already pre-painted the leading edge of the intake here on the underside. So uh, that's all going to go together fine. Let's get some glue on and get that put together. Another tummy a click.
I'm just checking the fit of the lower fuselage again before I commit to any glue, but that's going to go together all right. Okay, so that's all gone together. Uh, well, it's gone together perfectly, really. There's no gaps or anything. Everything aligns up. It's a fantastic fit. And we're getting used to that in the kit. So I'm just gonna leave that for a couple of hours to dry thoroughly. Then we'll remove the pegs and uh, think about the next steps with the model. Okay, so the uh, fuselage has had two or three hours to dry, so I'll remove the clamps. Make sure that everything's aligned properly. Okay, so that's all good. And it's amazing really when <laughs> You think the number of parts that are coming together there uh, and how perfectly aligned they are in the kits, fantastic engineering. And even more so, at the moment, I'm building the Zukimura BF109, which is a complex uh, assembly, as is this one. Uh, but Tamiya can just pull off that perfect fit uh, without really any difficulties. It's very difficult to misalign parts on this kit. Whereas the Zukimora, uh, I've no doubt that it would fit absolutely perfectly if you got it absolutely right, but there's too much scope in it for slight misalignments that uh, when you add several assemblies together, those little errors build up to the point where uh, in my build of the 109, uh, I had trouble to get things to align. So uh, Zukimura are trying to do something that Tamiya are, are real experts at, which is uh, these complicated assemblies, but perfect fit. The only thing that I want to do just to finish off this episode is to fit the uh, panels which complete the sides of the weapons bay. And that's these pieces here, which I've already painted the insides in the white. And they just drop onto the side. And again, the fit there is absolutely incredible. No problems at all with that. So uh, I'll get those glued on and that'll uh, finish off the work for this particular episode. This is a fiberglass pen which I use a lot for cleanup. Uh, it's very gentle on the plastic and it doesn't remove any of the detail. So it just removes the glue from what becomes a panel line between the two parts. Just smooths it all out and uh, 
that will just blend that part in once we've got some primer on it. So a very handy tool. I got this one really for photo etch work. It's good for cleaning uh, brass uh, and getting solder off soldered brass parts. But uh, I use it a lot for uh, plastic. So uh, that's as far as I'm going to go uh, in this episode with the build. Uh, we've now got up to section 18 in the instructions. So next time we'll be moving on uh, and starting to build the main undercarriage and the undercarriage doors. There's also another panel which goes here, which finishes off the internal of the weapons bay. So we'll pick that up next time, but uh, I'm pretty happy with that progress uh, for this episode. Okay, so that's it. We're all done for this week and uh, that's gone together really well. The fit of the kit, as you've seen in the video, it's uh, really incredible uh, considering the complexity of the build. Uh, in the next part, part three, I'll be uh, following the Tamiya instructions, which leads us on to building the main undercarriage and doing a little bit more work around the weapons bay. I'll also be doing a little bit more work on the BF109 in the next day or so. Uh, the uh, top coat varnish has dried on that and it's ready for the very few decals that I'm going to be uh, applying to the model. So hopefully you're following one or other of the builds, so uh, something coming up for you in the next few days either way. So until uh, the next time everybody look after yourself, stay safe and I'll see you in another few days time. Bye for now.